Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Brian Vicente, I'm an attorney uh, and I run Sensible Colorado, which is a um, nonprofit organization in Colorado. We've been some, around since 2004 and our work is sort of bifurcated. We're, we're the lead uh, organization that works on behalf of Colorado's medical marijuana patients. Um, and a fascinating fact there is, is uh, about two years ago, there were maybe 4,000 Colorado medical marijuana patients and there's over 100,000 today. So our, our phone, <laughs> let's give them a round of applause. The Colorado patients. Um, our, our phones certainly ring quite a bit more now than they did two years ago, which is a little overwhelming. Um, we also, Sensible Colorado, we also work on broader uh, marijuana reform issues and I've really for uh, you know, my entire professional career have been working to dismantle the war on drugs and um, as, as much as, um, and so I, I guess I, it, it, I'm happy to follow the senator because I think we have to move on multiple fronts. It's wonderful to see um, legislators taking this up, but what can citizens do, right? What can your average Joe do? And I think to some extent Colorado um, has sort of forged a path which has been a, a roadmap for other states and other activists maybe to get involved in. I, I think we are really close um, to ending the government's war on marijuana in Colorado. I think that'll happen within a couple years. And it has not been an easy road. We've learned a lot of lessons. And I just kind of want to lay out a little of what we've done. Um, the underlying kind of theme of, of what, where the activism has been at in Colorado is we've been all about forcing the discussion of this issue. And as a, you know, when I graduated law school in 2004, and of course my classmates were going on to firm jobs and you know, working in the biz corporate world or perhaps being a district attorney, I didn't hang out with those people, but um, you know, public <laughs> defender, what have you. Um, you know, I said, well, I'm actually gonna work on, on marijuana reform. You know, I worked for uh, MPP for a little while and, and then got Sensible Colorado going. And honestly, people kind of laughed and didn't take me seriously. And, and we're sort of like, well, you know, this is this is kind of a joke. And I think we've seen an evolution where, you know, those same people um, that would not return my phone calls, whether it's legislators that I, I just wanted to talk about the, you know, the word marijuana would just turn people off. And I really think we've gone from from marijuana, you know, just people snickering when they've heard that to this being a legitimacy, a legitimate policy issue, right? And the way I think we've done that is by forcing people to say the word marijuana, to read the word marijuana, to hear about marijuana on the news, whether it's medical patients or students standing up and saying, you know, we're tired of, of policies that push us towards using alcohol, which is a much more dangerous drug. We should be able to allow, uh, should be allowed to use marijuana uh, in, in the dorms or at parties and not be punished, not be kicked out of school for using a, a less harmful drug. And so really, um, I think that discussion has been key to getting uh, people like the senator and people like senators in Colorado to to consider this issue more seriously and, and to 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 uh, begin to tackle it. Um, in short, you know what happened in Colorado on a recreational front was really kicked off by students uh, in 2004, and we had uh, two of the biggest uh, universities in our state. Uh, Colorado University in Boulder, which had 50,000 plus people, and then Colorado State University in Fort Collins, uh, take on the issue of, of marijuana versus alcohol, right? And it was led by my, uh, bra the brave brothers and sisters at Safer that I work with, um, and I was involved to some extent. But essentially students saying enough is enough, we want our policies, uh, at least at least in the student level, right, in our handbook, in our, in our university code, to reflect the fact that, that uh, marijuana penalties should not be greater than the penalties for alcohol. And both of those measures passed, right? So it took kind of a radicalized student movement to kickstart this in Colorado. And that was then you know, launched into Denver, the capital. The capital of Colorado um, initiative campaign was run much like it's gonna be happening here in 2011 where enough citizens get together, enough citizens sign a piece of paper and you can put something, you can bypass the legislature, right? Put, put uh, use direct democracy, put it in front of the people. And that's exactly what happened in Denver. And I, I worked to, to some extent on that campaign and I gotta tell you, nobody thought it was gonna win, right? Nobody thought it was gonna win. And at the end of the day, Denver, you know, essentially a city of two million people became the first city in history to legalize marijuana, right? Worldwide, right? I and mean, this is just enormous. Just enormous news. Um, you know, and uh, maybe idealists like myself thought, well, now that we have actually changed the Denver marijuana law, our city code, to say that adults 21 and older should not be punished, 
uh, for possessing marijuana, maybe things will change. And in fact, the arrest continued, and it was kind of maddening uh, to, to me and other activists, and probably to many voters that said, you know, this is bullshit. You know, we voted on this, and the police have, have not really um, respected that. So uh, moving on from there, a, a statewide push was run. Uh, it, the, net, the following year, it only got 41%, but 41% ain't bad, you know, and we've shown that we're actually gaining support every year. We went back to Denver with another initiative uh, in 2007, which was the lowest law enforcement priority initiative, very similar to what Seattle has uh, in that basically says for police and prosecutors, uh, marijuana possession uh, should be the lowest priority. And uh, we appointed a mayor's panel. I serve on that panel. I'm the chair, actually, and the, the vice chair is a police officer. It's, it's an uncomfortable meeting sometimes. But, um, you know, we've seen a, a sort of downward trend, I think, in the arrest, which has been positive. So um, the other quick aspect, you know, we've had some other action in Colorado, people in Breckenridge, people in um, Durango, people in, in smaller cities have gotten together and changed their local laws, and all that helps. I mean, it really gets news out there, and, and, and all of these events, all of these um, changes in our laws are accompanied by people like me, people like you, writing press releases, sending it out, uh, it, you know, emailing out press releases, getting, having press conferences, things like that that maybe can be, seem a little um, intuitive. We're not taught how to do that in law school or in college, frankly, but it's incredibly important to do, uh, to get the word out so you're actually reaching a broader audience, you're getting people to think about marijuana, to read about it in their local paper, in the state paper, you know, your stunts on the news, that sort of thing, um, you know, can just be incredibly useful. You know, the medical marijuana stuff in Colorado, um, we've, uh, of course, it was initially brought on by the people uh, in 2000, we got our medical marijuana law. And then um, we've had this just incredible growth in our program, which, which I pointed out. And that actually uh, led to the legislature picking this up. So again, um, we have the people kind of driving the boat and eventually eight years after our law passed, the, or excuse me, 10 years after our law passed, the legislature decided, oh, well, we're actually gonna regulate this and uh, we passed just an absolute landmark piece of legislation uh, last year in the Colorado um, legislative session, which is the most comprehensive framework for marijuana regulation in the world? I don't know. But we now have about a thousand licensed dispensaries. We also, and these are state licensed, right? They're, they ain't going away. We also have um, about 200 to 300 edible producers who are separately licensed, uh, and they're all being taxed, and, and if, you know, I think some skeptics may say, well, this, this may last, this may not last. And to me, what, what, what shows that it's actually going to last is we have a state constitution that protects patients. We also have a couple state laws. But then perhaps the most important factor is we have uh, a 100-person wing of our Department of Revenue whose job it is to oversee these marijuana regulations. Yeah, it's a sort of it's, it's phenomenal. You know, there's 100 government jobs. That's also millions and millions of dollars coming into our state economy uh, to regulate these, these medical marijuana businesses. Um, so, you know, citizens certainly get involved. We are down there every day at the Capitol trying to either do damage control or push, ish, um, push provisions of that law which would help patients and help their providers. And, and to, a, to a large degree, we're successful. So I'm gonna stop going, uh, babbling on and turn things over to, to Douglas, but I look forward to a, a dialogue later on, thanks.